Foo Fighters main man Dave Grohl says that the new album is like their version of David Bowie's Let's Dance album, which I'll just have to take his word for because I don't really listen to David Bowie. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I've heard Bowie's Let's Dance before. I've seen Zoolander like most people. Greetings hard and heavy music fans. I'm Dante, you're watching The Heavy Haystack, and today I'm talking about the new album from Foo Fighters titled Medicine at Midnight. This is the 10th album from American rock titans Foo Fighters and continues their streak of trying to write and record an album in new and interesting ways that they've been doing for the past decade now. With 2011's Wasting Light, the band went old school writing the songs in a garage and recording on analog equipment. In 2014, they recorded eight songs in eight cities for their Sonic Highways album. On 2017's Concrete and Gold, they went with a pop producer who never recorded a hard rock album before and collaborated with big pop names like Justin Timberlake and Paul McCartney. And on this album, they recorded in an old house from the 1940s in LA, where apparently a lot of spooky and paranormal stuff happened during the recording sessions and wrapped up the writing and recording of the record a lot quicker than their usual. Now while this album doesn't have any spooky sounding stuff on it, it does definitely sound different from what Foo Fighters are known for. They already started flirting with more straight up pop rock on previous album Concrete and Gold, helped by producer Greg Kirsten who's done records with Adele, Pink, and Sia among others. The band tapped them once again for this record, and the result is an upbeat dance rock record that's definitely pop friendly while still being guitar based. A strong switch from the post grunge the band has made their name on. You can hear this difference in sound with the first single, Shame Shame. The bedrock of the track is its distinctive percussion, an upbeat shuffle that's accented with both your usual snares along with some hand claps. And rather than guitar being the lead instrument, the song is led more by strings to give the song a fairly mellow vibe even with its chorus. Distinctive percussion is a big feature of this album. On the title track, Medicine at Midnight, you can hear that 80s Bowie comparison start to make sense, as it has a new wave vibe in its verses with disco-like percussion balanced with the melodic chorus and a background choir that reminds you of Bob Seger, Night Move style. Cloud Spotter might be the favorite of these types of tracks on the album. It's a straight up dance rock song with a strong funk and Latin vibe with its percussion, hard rock guitars in its chorus, and lighthearted lyrics with a nice little Hendrix reference in the pre-chorus. Excuse me while I kiss the sky. The Foo seem to navigate this dance rock vibe adeptly well. It reminds you what Queens of the Stone Age are trying to do with their Villains album. But unlike Queens who jumped off the deep end into an unfamiliar sound, Foo Fighters kept a tether to their bread and butter rock roots that they fully have a handle on making this foray into dance rock much more well done, with a happy blend of new elements, what the band already knows how to do. Foo Fighters do have songs on this album that should appease their longtime fans, however. No Son of Mine still sounds a bit different from their usual hard alt-rock, but it's definitely more in the Foo's usual wheelhouse. A driving, hard rock, guitar first song that's fairly simple in its composition, but still has those Seeger-esque backing choir vocals in its chorus. Closing track, Love Dies Young, sounds more like your typical Foo Fighters Radio Ready alt rock song. Their older track, Long Road to Ruin, comes to mind with this one. The last single released right before the album, Waiting on a War, is also classic Foo Fighters, an acoustic based ballad that relies heavily on Dave Grohl's talent for well written choruses and his enjoyable, shouty singing style, and also ends on a full band rock and roll outro. With Medicine at Midnight, Foo Fighters are further proving that they can experiment with their established style while keeping their musical quality to a high level. It's hard to detect any growing pains with their artistic exploration, and that's likely due to the fact that the band's sound has always started with airtight songwriting ability. And no matter what style of music you play, if you start with a strong songwriting focus, the other pieces of instrumentation and production will fall into place fairly easily. Foo Fighters' Medicine at Midnight gets a 4 out of 5. What did you think of the new Foo Fighters album? Leave a like, comment, and subscribe to The Heavy Haystack if you want to see more videos similar to this one. Peace, love, music, and I'll see y'all next time.